Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a haul video, a charity shop haul video actually. Um, and I actually finally got enough for a sit down uh, charity shop haul video from my local town. Now you'll know if you've been following the channel for the last couple of months, in the vlogs and things like that, um, I kind of haven't been finding that much at all from my local town uh, in terms of charity shopping. And um, you know, it's been getting me down a bit, it's been putting me in a negative mindset. And then that just kind of exacerbates the problem I suppose you know it just um, accelerates the problem because then you're going around the charity shops thinking oh well last time I didn't get anything so this time I'm probably not gonna get anything and then that makes you it all it almost make well it certainly does for me it almost makes me a little bit more blind to the items that I'm actually looking at in the charity shop at that specific time because even though you might see certain items that might be a possibility to pick up you're kind of thinking well mm, I don't know it's probably not gonna be worth anything anyway or I'll probably go over to have a look at the makers on it and it won't be a very good makers or whatever if you're looking at a piece of pottery or something so this negativity builds up and builds up over time and you kind of create your own trap in one way and it means that when you're going around the charity shops you're not sort of being as enthusiastic and, and letting that kind of rush through you and, and letting that passion and that kind of love for what you do kind of take you to where you need to be and, and let you find the items. Because uh, when you've got sort of rose-tinted glasses on opposed to when you've not and you're looking at the world in sort of a more of a grey light, um, it, there is a huge difference even if in just the things that are laid out before you like one person with rose tinted glasses on might pick up so much more in the charity shops than someone who's got more of a depressive or grey outlook when they're going into the charity shops. I truly believe that, I honestly do. And after doing this for so long and going around so many charity shops uh, and having all that ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs, I can quite confidently say that is probably what's happening for me and that's why um, I've not been able to, to attain that many items for the charity shops. Not necessarily that the items aren't there, but my, my, my mindset isn't in the right place. Now, uh, also, my, vo my voice is weirdly going there. I don't know why that was. But I I'm, I'm assuming that at some point when I've been going in, the items just haven't been there genuinely as well, you know, on certain weeks. But um, I think a lot of it is down to this kind of, oh, I didn't get anything last week, so why should I get anything this week? Or oh, I'm probably not going to get anything this week. And you don't go into it with an open mind. So yesterday, I went into it with an open mind. I just kind of went in to see what I could find. And that's a good little mantra for the charity shops. Just go in with an open mind, see what you can find and just enjoy it you know just enjoy going around the charity shops genuinely just enjoy what you're doing and, and things will come to you and you'll be able to see things and that's what hopefully I've demonstrated with today you know opposed to going in with a negative mindset or or an open mindset or a positive mindset you know there's a, there's a vast difference um, and maybe not just in today's video I've demonstrated that but over the last two months specifically in terms of negativity and positivity and how we can impact your uh, sourcing at charity shops but I won't do any more rambling on that I did want to ramble a little bit about that because I wanted to get out a little bit of uh, reasoning behind why I feel inside myself um, this has been happening you know and why I've, I've uh, not been getting that much stuff because it seems a little bit uh, naive to think that over t over the course of two months there's not been anything in the charity shop you know that's kind of a little bit far-fetched so i think there is a little bit more of a deeper meaning and i think i have kind of sussed it with, with what i've just talked about there yesterday was great i'll get on with the whole video if you do not like antiques and collectibles then don't worry don't worry, there's only like two or three pieces of uh, collectibles in this haul. The rest of it is just toys and there's a plush toy and there's a video game and there's board games and the rest of it. So don't you worry, I have saved you for once. There's going to be some other uh, stuff in this haul opposed to just all the random and for some people boring antiques and collectibles that I've been uh, looking at recently. We all get like kind of high off different things, you know, in terms of reselling. Some people like antiques, some people like, you know, toys some people like clothing and that's completely fine whatever sort of gets you uh, gets you going really and gets that passion up um but yeah today um we are going to be getting high on some toys uh we're not really going to be getting high so yeah anyway um but we will get on with this i've rambled enough so first off we've got this uh, wallace and gromit i'm guessing this is like uh, late 80s 90s sort of probably a vintage plush this one anyway uh, brand new with the tag or, or well new with the tag i suppose kind of like old new it's like um it's old and new at the same time kind of thing um but yeah so 249 on that one there paid and uh, i've seen these go all over the place honestly like 
Some have gone for like five quid plus postage on like auction. Some have gone for more than that. Some have gone for like twelve ninety nine pre owned. It's really like crazy all over the place. I'm gonna go. I'd say fairly high on this one at fourteen ninety nine plus postage and just wait it out and I'm sure someone will pick it off at some point. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to ignore some of the like lower value auction results that this has gone for because on auction some of these haven't got the, the most brilliant money or anything. But I'm just going to ignore that and go higher on buy it now and at some point it will get picked off. So yeah, that's that one there and you can see the little tag there. It's by Born to Play. I've had that make a few times in various different plush toys. Um, so yeah, that's that one there anyway. So next we've got this, uh, what is this? Crown Devon Fieldings 1078, the number is there. Um, it's this old coach um, house yard. You can probably see down here we've got some crazing, we've got some crazing up here. Um, and yeah, I paid £3 for this, £3 there. And um, yeah, I was kind of thinking this would be about £12.99. I've not actually found this on completed and solds, as I've kind of alluded to in the past. It's very hard with antiques and collectibles to... Well, it depends on how rare the piece is, but if you've got, like, this isn't a rare piece, but if you've got, like, a rare piece, you probably won't even be able, to, you won't stand any chance of finding it on completed and sold, so you won't stand much of a chance. The more commoner pieces, the more you will find on complete and sold, and you can do a bit more um, in-depth price research, I suppose. Um, but with this one, I couldn't find it on complete and sold, which is a bit um, surprising to me, because I thought this wouldn't be uh, too rare or anything, and maybe it isn't that rare, but uh, just, you know, none have been sold on eBay in the last three months. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, there has been similar ones, you know, similar mugs or jugs or whatever of these um, that have got that have gone for like you know fourteen ninety nine. There's a couple on for like sixteen ninety nine, twelve, thirteen ninety nine. So I'm probably gonna go you know between twelve ninety nine and fourteen ninety nine on this one. And uh, yeah, that's that one there anyway. So I got four of these brick heads for about 47% discount. They're £5.23 down from £10. Uh, these are the Harry Potter and Mindy Granger ones. I only got these because they were 47% off. I wouldn't really be dealing with brick heads too much anymore unless they're a seasonal one or unless they show me that they, uh, you know, that they do perform pretty well. Like, you know, there's a lot of demand for them and stuff like that. Um, but these are just going to be a long-term RA purchase. So, you know, maybe this Q4, maybe even later than that, um, I will sell these. But, yeah, I can't see them going mega high. They're currently on eBay for about £12.99. So that is pretty good because it is above retail price. And that is one of the indicators I look for on eBay if a Lego set is selling for above retail price, even though it's still in production and still available at Lego. Um, then, obviously, that is a good indication that it's going to do well well after lego retires the set now i don't know by the time this video goes out this might have been retired i'm not sure um but yeah hopefully that maybe this q4 or maybe a little bit later i can push closer to that 20 quid on these sets um maybe 17.99 something like that and uh, i'd be happy with that you know just to clear them at that um and yeah so that's those i did get four of them but i won't get the others up that, that's all they had on the shelf i would have bought more if there was more on the shelf but just simply wasn't any more on the shelf so yeah um so i got those anyway next um, something maybe i don't know whether i can actually use the word nostalgic because it's not that long ago is it really but um about sort of uh i don't know two years ago are we looking about two years ago now uh, i think this was probably um a few months after the whole trivial pursuit thing that people started getting into these and uh, buying a lot of these, you know, these are the Kellogg cereal balls, and I'm not just talking about the Kellogg cereal balls, but there were so many different cereal balls and so many different bowls and things like that that people were buying and showing on video and saying, oh, you can get X amount for these, and, and you know, they go pretty quick and all the rest of it. So I looked at these in the charity shop, um, and I saw them, and I thought, oh, yeah, I remember them. I've sold them a few times and all the rest of it. And um, I was looking at them, and I was like, well, they're probably not worth that much money. And I was kind of getting into that negative mindset again of oh I'll just walk out the charity shop and um, I, I basically kind of um, held myself back and I, I went back over to them and thought well I'd be silly not to do a bit of research on them so I just very quickly looked them up on my phone I saw just on the first or second result on the complete and sold that someone had got £10 for a single bowl now don't know whether you can whether I've actually shown you there but uh, yeah £1 each I paid for these for the two so £2 uh, for the two and yeah if I can get £20 for the pair of these I'd be really happy um, so yeah even though uh, 
um, you know, I was thinking these might be saturated because obviously when people were talking about them two years ago, so everyone was talking about it, everyone was buying them. And when that happens, and I'm going to reference the Trivial Pursuit thing again, and it's quite funny because a lot of new people have probably joined the channel over the last six months or a year and they probably don't really, they might not get this analogy at all. Is it an analogy? I suppose it is an analogy, but... They might not actually get this reference in Trivial Pursuit because that was, I suppose, what, three years ago now or something, the Trivial Pursuit craze? Um, but basically, ages ago, uh, loads of different people, obviously it started with Nick Kills, but loads of different people on videos talking about Trivial Pursuit, buying them up from charity shops for a pound or two pounds for the board game, breaking them down into the cards and the wedges and stuff and, and selling them that way. And the market got completely flooded and completely saturated. And, uh, and I'm assuming it's still pretty flooded uh, to this current day and prices aren't as good as they were so that's why I kind of um, you know sort of brushed these off at first because I thought oh well, it's probably one of those items that's just still saturated but yeah I was really happy to find that they uh, are still worth some money so yeah you know if you want to pick those up then go for it you know a car boot 50p or whatever a pound then yeah brilliant uh, nice little margin in them so yeah that's those there so next uh, we've got this Just Dance 2 for the Wii, brand new and sealed. I did pay a little bit more than I maybe would have liked to for this, but I uh, I thought to myself, you know what, I'll, I'll take a chance on that at, at 250 um, only because it's brand new, new and sealed, of course. Now one's gone for 14 99 one's gone for 7 95 one's gone for 9 95 various different timescales they went for, obviously, uh, in terms of, you know, when they actually sold. Um, but yeah, so I'm thinking... I'll probably go about twelve ninety nine on this, probably in the middle, you know, one's gone for nine ninety five, one's gone for fourteen ninety five, one's gone for seven ninety five granted, but I think I could probably get about twelve ninety nine on this if I waited a little bit. So um yeah, probably gonna go about that on that one. I will come down to nine ninety nine if I need to. Obviously this will go as a large letter, so it won't be like, you know, two whatever postage will be, two pound eighty five or whatever. Um but it'll go for like what one nineteen or something, some something along those lines anyway, as a large letter, because it'll be over a hundred grams. So yeah, anyway, uh, that's that one. So yeah, nice little find on that one. Um yeah, so I was a little bit surprised on price with that one. I thought I, I was a little bit, you know, thinking, oh, will this one be worth it or, or won't it? You know, so I was like that. I was thinking, mm, maybe I've made a mistake on that one, but still, it was okay. So next, something uh, got something that goes for about twelve, thirteen quid. Uh, I paid one ninety nine on this. It's this little uh, Avengers Rescue helicopter, uh, and yeah, I'm just gonna pitch it at that one ninety nine paid into twelve or thirteen quid. Not much of it needs to be said on this item. Just a fairly standard, brand new uh, item here. Um, but yeah, thought I, I I just saw it and I thought, yeah, you know what? I'll have a research of that, and it turned out to be worth something. So yeah, that's that one there. So we've got this frustration popomatic now on eBay. People People are referencing that this is from 1988. Now, I was a little bit surprised at that because this logo for Peter Pan Playthings, I've seen gen, gen, I've seen generally on things from mid 70s. You know, mid to late 70s, that logo appears uh, quite often. Um, so I was a little bit puzzled why people were putting 1988. Anyway, I looked over it and I found on one of these sides. Uh, here we go. Uh, the the um, basically the date is in Roman numerals, and we can see here it says. Oh, you can probably see it for yourselves there. I don't know. It might be a bit. Uh, might not be able to see it that way. If you want to pause the video now to see it, you can do. But it basically says MCM, which is 1900. L, I believe, is 50, so that'd be 1950. XX, well, they're two pairs, uh, two tens, so that'd be 20, so that's 1970. Then we've got V, which is 5, 1975. And then we've got III, which is 1978, right? So I was puzzled that people were putting it on as 1988, but I know what's happened, right? So someone's miscalculated the Roman numerals, one of the sellers, which is fair enough, right? But they put it on as 1988, and then someone else comes along, they don't read the, the Roman numerals on the box at all, they just literally see that someone's put it on as 1988, and then they copy that and put it into their title, and the whole cycle repeats itself until the, all the sold listings say like 1988, uh, which is pretty funny, you know, I mean, there wasn't actually that many sold listings for this, so it wasn't like a big long list of 1988, but you can see how that would progress um, until someone like me comes along who just double checks the, the date in Roman numerals and thinks, actually no, 
1988 is wrong. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be listing this as 1978. Um, and if I've got it wrong, then yeah, I've got it wrong. But um, still, I'm pretty sure it's 78. Um, and yeah, this is frustration. Uh, I paid £2 for this. This this one still goes for decent money. Uh, I'm thinking of putting this on for about 14 quid plus postage. Maybe, maybe 14 99 plus postage. Um, go fairly high on it. And yeah, from £2, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this was actually originally... Uh, you can see there's a label for three quid there, but under that label, there's another label. This was originally 20 quid in, in, in the shop next door. Basically, there's two age UKs next to each other. There's one more vintage shop, and then there's one like more, well, it's like a one pound shop, basically. So they're very contrasting shops. And when the vintage, this is what cracks me up, when the vintage stuff doesn't sell in that age UK, they just pass it on to the other one, and then they mark it right down to like one or two pounds. So. Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so this was 20 quid and I looked at it and I was like, there's no way I'm paying that. Um, but yeah, so, I, but I still did want it. You know, I wanted to pick it up. But um, then the next week I come in and it's uh, in the other shop for two quid. So I was like, yeah, brilliant. I'll have that. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's that one. And uh, yeah, nice little, uh, nice little item there. So next we've got something very weird, again from the age UK, uh, this was a quid, I don't know whether you can see on there, one pound, um, but yeah we've got this here, um, it's a weird little framed, I don't know what it is, an oil painting maybe, I don't know, I don't know, um, but it looks like it's been hand done, um, and it's really really odd, it's like this tiny miniature little painting, um, it's by Madrin, Mad, a Madrin pod, a Madrin product there. Um, so yeah, I don't know on that one. I mean, I just picked it up for a quid. I thought it was pretty unusual. I'll probably just list it for nine ninety five plus post, something like that. I'll do a bit of research beforehand because you never know. I might be completely shooting myself in the foot. This might be worth really good money um, because I've not seen something like this before. But you know, I don't know. I don't think it's worth really good money, but it could be. You know, there's always that potential. Um, so you have got to be careful with some things because you might be selling something that's worth 50 quid for 10 quid or whatever sometimes with uh, collectibles and things like this. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's that one there. I just wanted to show you that one very quickly. But I thought for a quid, it's always worth just taking a punt on things like this. Just things that you think, oh, I might be able to squeeze a tenner out of it or something. Um, then, yeah, so that's that one anyway there. Oh, this was a fail, and I didn't even think this would be a fail. Like, this is Speak Out, brand new and sealed, um, paid £2 for it. I'm going to be lucky to get, like, 6 or 7 quid for this. Like, there has been ones recently that have gone for, like, 15 quid or something, but the vast majority of completed and sold are very, very low indeed, like, way below a tenner. Um, and I was really puzzled because I thought... Well, it's brand new, you know, it's a sealed board game, brand new. And I thought, even though it is Speak Out, and Speak Out's kind of had its time, it's been and gone, I would have at least thought it'd be like 10 quid or something, you know? But, yeah, just completely made a flat-out mistake on that one. Uh, paid £2, be lucky to get my money out of it. I generally, I mean, you guys know as much as me, I generally don't make these, like, really silly mistakes anymore. But, yeah, sometimes you just do, don't you? Sometimes you, you do make a, a silly mistake. Um, I mean, you do. It, I still do it on the postage every now and then, whether it's generally not so much sending out the wrong item, but maybe I've, uh, you know, not put enough postage on an item, or maybe uh, the item goes over into another weight bracket and I didn't calculate properly, and then I end up having to pay more on postage. But, yeah, not a lot of the time I make a really silly mistake like that one. But, I mean, it's weird, because I looked at it in the chat shop for two quid, and I thought, uh, oh, yeah, that'll be worth, like, ten quid anyway. I know that, that'll be worth ten quid. But it's, uh, but it's one of those items I was really confident on, yet I didn't research it or anything because I was confident on it, yet it turns out to be worth nothing. So it's weird, yeah, it's really weird that. But I, I would have thought that would have been worth more. But anyway, that's the way it goes sometimes. So yeah, that's that one there. Next, we've got Articulate from the same shop, which again was £2. Probably looking, what, 12 99 to 14 something like that, that on this version. I don't think it will change too much. It always seems to sit around that. Um, and yeah, that's that one. So two pound into hopefully twelve ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine. Pretty happy with that one. Uh, again, this one, Trivial Pursuit. Bet you know it. This was in a sale at the charity shop. You can see there, down from two forty nine to one twenty five. And yeah, I think this is again. 
$12.99 is probably going to be top end though for this one. Maybe not $14.99, but $12.99 would be top end. Uh, maybe more like a tenner plus postage, but uh, I might try for $12.99 plus post on this one uh, and then reduce if I need to. But yeah, that's that one there. But for $1.25, I was all over that. Nice price on that. I'm going to be a decent profit in it because I've got a good buying price. So yeah, that's that one. And then I think finally, I don't think there's anything. Oh, did I show you that one? Oh, I don't know whether I showed you that one. Right, I'm going to show you this one as well. I might have repeated myself. I don't think I have. I don't think I've shown this one. Um, but if I've repeated myself, I apologise showing this one. But I don't think I have. Um, but first, for £5, I did really take a punt on these. Um, I'm probably going to be looking... If if I'm lucky, I'll get 20 quid for these. Um, you know, it's got the case with it. It's got all the uh, caps with it. They've all fell off. Uh, one sec. All the little caps have fell off onto the floor, or most of them have anyway. Um, there was two caps on there as well. These are Super Zenith uh, 10 by 50 field binoculars. Uh, you can probably see on there 10 by 50, 10 times 50 or whatever. Uh, Super Zenith binoculars. And I was thinking I'd probably get 20, 25 quid, something like that for these. There has been the majority that have gone for about £15 plus postage though on, on eBay. So... But then there's one on for 25 quid, there's one on for 20. I have got uh, a little case with them, which is nice. I've got all the caps with them as well, which is good. Uh, they're in brilliant condition, they work. I tested them in the charity shop. And yeah, you know, I think, yeah, probably 20 quid plus postage, something like that on those. But I, I would have liked maybe 25, but you know, um, yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a pump, that one. So five quid into 20 quid there. Um, binoculars are kind of... A lot of them are good, you know, a lot of them are decent, um, but they are kind of a bit hit or miss at the same time. It Like, certain brands, if you take a punt on them, you, you're not too sure with them. You know, some might be, like, some brands are, like, just surprise you and they're, like, 50, 60 quid. And then others, you're lucky to get a tenner, uh, you're lucky to get, like, 20 quid out of them. A lot of them are around that 20 quid mark, though, so you're kind of safe. Um, so that's why I kind of paid up even without researching them, because I thought, I can see these being a £20 pair of binoculars. Some ones do go for only, like, 10 quid, though, um, so you have got to be a bit careful, but a lot of them do go for, like, 20 quid. So, um, you know, certainly if you're picking them up for one, two, three pound at a boot sale, just go for it, because even no matter what the binoculars are, unless they're, like, really tiny uh, unbranded ones or anything, then I wouldn't pick them up. But if they're a decent size and they've got a make of them and they look pretty vintage, one, two or three quid at a boot sale, just go go for it, you know? Um, but yeah, that's those there anyway. And as I say, we've got a little case here that I flipped them out of there. Don't know whether it's the original case, but they do fit in here and it's a nice little case all the same. So yeah, that's that, those ones. And um, yeah, that is everything. So I think we're looking quite a, a long video, this one. So try and do a little bit of the sneaky cut in here and there so I can get it down a little bit for you guys and make it a little bit more of a pleasurable viewing experience. I just remembered, forgot to do this one. Right, and, and I nearly did forget then, and then people will be shouting at me in the comment section like, no, I wanted to see that jug. Um, but yeah, so this is, or maybe not, I don't know, maybe people don't want to see this. But um, yeah, this I saw um, basically was on the bric black shelf. It's by Price Brothers. I've never heard of that name, or I don't think I have. Uh, the design is just cottage. It just says cottage, cottage there. Looks like similar to Silvac and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we've got this little cottage design in the middle of it, middle of it as you would expect from the name. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking, you know, I paid two pound for this. I was thinking maybe twelve ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine on this. Unfortunately, the most I'm going to get out of this is about ten pound plus postage, which. Is a shame. I mean, there's still going to be profit in it. Um, you know, obviously it might take a while to sell. Uh, that's kind of what I expect when I'm buying pottery. I always buy it thinking, right, this is going to take a few months to sell. I don't buy it thinking, right, you know, I'm going to get my investment back out of it in, in a, a week or in a few days or whatever. I buy something like this knowing full well my investment is going to be tied up for a while. Um, so I bought it, you know, for two quid. And I would have hoped for it to be worth a little bit more than it is. Um, but yeah, I'll just whack it on for £10 plus postage. Just let it sit there. And uh, at some point, it'll get picked off. And generally, it's about building an inventory of these things. Like, just build a, a nice inventory of these things. And, um, you know, that'll, that'll mean that because of your large inventory, you'll end up getting sales uh, quite frequently. But what I found with the antiques as well is... 
it is always worth, if you're doing antiques, to try and do a few toys and games or a bit of clothing as well because um, that gives you the sales consistency uh, that maybe the antiques are lacking in. So certainly I'm going to be trying to get back into getting a few more toys and stuff uh, just to give me that more of that sales consistency that the antiques sometimes can't provide me with. So um, yeah, generally, you know, if, you, if you're looking to do antiques and stuff, uh, either have a huge inventory, I'm talking like between three and five thousand items, something like that. I'm, I'm being quite genuine. You'll probably need about that. Or if you're not going to have that and you're only going to want an inventory of about a thousand items, uh, then you need to be doing toys and games alongside it. Or you need to have Amazon FBA running and do toys on there. Or you need to have some other income source because it's just not going to work that well for you unless but it can work if you do if you have an insane amount of knowledge and you go for high end antiques that's the only way i feel you're going to do antiques and make a really good uh, wage with it um below a thousand items that's probably the one way that it would work um you know i'd say doing those high end antiques and no you know having a lot of knowledge in the field and um you know basically getting a good buy in price as well and uh, and then you might be able to do it below a thousand items but uh, yeah if you're gonna do like lower end antiques like things like this you basically need a, a really large inventory essentially is what i'm saying um so yeah i'll leave it there guys i won't ramble anymore if you did like the video then please do give it a like if you haven't already then please do subscribe to the channel if this is the content that you'd like to see and um yeah i'll leave it there if you have any more comments down below then please do drop those down below and i will see you in the next one so i'll see you very soon guys